So as you might know, Mr. Soap and Clay, he's got one of those beard things and it's pretty awesome. And I love his beard. And I was so excited when he decided he wanted to start growing a beard out. He was more excited when I let him finally shave his head. So he has that bald head and the big beard thing going on looking like a mountain man and it's great but the thing is he doesn't want to actually you know look like an unkempt mountain man with all that beard stuff going on and so as a result i have refined and am completely proud of all of my beard care products because they're amazing and I thought, since we have a lot of boy sudsers too, and we spend a lot of time focusing on like soaps and or like female products or whatever, that it would be fun to do a Project Soapway challenge for the guys, kind of. You know what I mean? And so we're going to deal with beard care, like a big beard, you know? So that's what we are talking about today. And we are going to be kicking off Project Soapway with my beard bomb recipe. And I will tell you more about it in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for week 28 of year three and Project Soapway challenge number, I don't even know at this point. There's been a lot of them. And it is a beard balm challenge. Now this is a recipe challenge. So every person that submitted for Project Soapway, they submitted the recipe itself. They also submitted a picture of the beard balm so I could tell consistency. And the jury then looked at the recipe, looked at the pictures, we made our decisions, and we have three winners, which I'm super duper excited to, you know, talk to you about and showcase this week because there are some really fun recipes with some really interesting ingredients. But first we have to do my beard balm recipe. And so this one is actually a twist on the beard balm recipes that I've given on the channel in the past. And actually now that I think about it, I think I've only maybe done two recipes. But this particular recipe, I'm kind of doing something diffy because I want to. And one of the reasons why I wanted to is because I had coffee butter and I really wanted to play with it. So that's what we are going to be doing today. Plus a, an extra little thing with some glitter. It's a, it's a move. It's a moment. It's a thing. But let's get to the video. We can check out my recipe and talk about why I selected the oils and butters and waxes that I did. Okay, so beard balm recipe day. We're gonna do it simple this time. It's basically just gonna be four, you know, oils and butters, and I'm giving you a recipe in grams because this person needs ingredients with grams. I don't know why they can't convert, but you know, there you go. There's the recipe. So yeah, basically we are uh, dealing with uh, one part of a wax. You can do a bees, you can do an e-wax. My particular one, I am using an emulsifying wax that contains acetyl alcohol and uh, two parts butter. You can mix and match with that. For this particular one, I am doing just strictly coffee butter because I have coffee butter, and that is also infused with caffeine, and I think that's fun because caffeine on the skin underneath the beard is, you know, gonna be a good time, you know, allegedly. We can't say anything about that, you know, as cosmetic makers, but, you know, good time. And uh, also one part oils, and for this particular one, I am using jojoba and castor, now, the recipes that I have given you in the past have some kind of complicated oils in them, like broccoli seed and stuff, and that's expensive and it's hard to source. And so I thought it would be a good idea to give a really good, just kind of base recipe for you to start building off of for your beard balms, because there is a lot of mixing and matching that you can do within your oils and your butters. And we will definitely be getting more into that when we talk to 
one of our Project Soap by winners for the Beard Bomb recipe because he was great with all of it, and I love all of his note-taking and all the things. But anyway, you can mix and match and, you know, find some good substitutions. But I have found, just because of the overall texture of beards in general, that jojoba and castor are just like my absolute faves to put in. If I'm not doing a broccoli seed oil or a hemp, and what I'm really going for is ultimate hydration, protection, sealing of the hair shaft, so everything lays down nicely. Castor and jojoba, love them so much. That said, you can totally use other oils. I do recommend doing at least one really heavyweight, deep penetrating oil, like an avocado or a castor, and one that's either lighter or intended to seal, like a jojoba or also a castor. So the castor does kind of serve double duty with this. Now, my original recipe, I went ahead and did 1% one, one of the extract and 1% of the scent. That ends up being 2.8 grams, a very, very tiny amount. And I really did want to up the awesome. I love putting buckthorn extract into all, you know, beard type products because it is hair softening. It does help out with the skin underneath and it does promote good, healthy hair growth. So I went ahead and changed that to 3% extract for the buckthorn and ended up doing, I think, the same for the scent. So I ended up to 3% of the total scent. Now, with scents, uh, you can do either a fragrance oil, obviously a skin safe fragrance oil within the appropriate IFRA ratings. I am using bourbon and tobacco from uh, Sierra Candles because I love bourbon and tobacco and this is going to be going on Mr. Soap and Clay and he loves this scent as well. And so I really think that you should keep all of your scents though, even if it is within the ratings to go a higher percentage. I really do recommend you use the lighter version of that just because it's right next to their nose all day long. And so if it gets to be overpowering, it's kind of like they just have their face in a bottle of cologne or essential oil or whatever all day. And that can cause, you know, other things like headaches and whatnot. So definitely keep it light. If you're dealing with essential oils and you are wanting it to be a, you know, a hair friendly as well as a skin friendly essential oil, obviously you want a skin friendly essential oil but do pay attention to any sort of contraindications that may come with the essential oils that, you know, would occur from having essentially long-term, you know, stay as a leave-on product. So just pay attention to that with essential oils. But again, you really kind of go, I can go either way, depending on what you want to do. Okay, and on to the pour of this. Now, after I have all of the ingredients together, I just put it in the microwave, make sure everything is melted down. I give it a really good stir. And then even if I don't have shea butter in, I do like to let it sit for about 20 minutes just so all of the warm oils and butters can mix and meld and do their thing and, you know, make sure that they're all marrying together with their fatty acids. And that's delightful for me. It's not necessary in all actuality. I know a lot of people prefer to use a double boiler for a beard oil or a beard balm, that's also not necessary. But you know, you live your best life. You do whatever makes sense for you. This is best for me because I do not have a double boiler. So there's that. But after I've let it set for around 20 minutes and it has cooled down a little bit, I then pour it into the containers. For these particular containers, I use just, you know, these little guys that I get from Paper Mart, I believe, and they are not lined. Now, I have received a lot of questions about whether or not you should get the lined, you know, containers if you're doing these tin containers. And for beard balm, I would say no. There is no water in a, any of this, and so it's super not necessary. Now, for a beard conditioner or a lotion or anything that contains water at all, definitely get the lined containers because those containers will start rusting. And I will show you one of the containers here in just a minute that I really, really love, also from Paper Mart, it's a two ounce container as opposed to these guys, which are all one ounce containers. Now this is a version of a, um, of a container that I wouldn't actually use for a beard conditioner because it doesn't have a twist, but for a beard balm that I'm going to be again giving to Mr. Soap and Clay, the two ounce is gonna be great for him and the non-lined is awesome. But if you're gonna be, again, anything with water, definitely get a lined container or it's going to rust inside.
And on to the reveal. Now, this is a really cool recipe in that it firms up very nicely, as you can see. We don't have any issues with it being, you know, bumpy or any weird texture going on. But it is reasonably easy to get your finger, you know, into it and actually scoop out a little bit. I like the consistency of this a whole bunch. For the summer months, I would be worried about it melting. And so if you like this recipe and you want to use it year round, I would put it in a separate package um, to make sure that just if it does melt, the end user can then just kind of pop that into, you know, their fridge to solidify it before even opening it up. But for the actual consistency and texture, it's very delightful. It's not sticky. It has a nice, smooth application there. It glides on really beautifully. You can see the sheen from it, which on a hand seems a little bit over the top and overly moisturized. But remember, we are talking about beard hair. Beard hair is coarse. Beard hair is dry. And so putting something like this on it with a lot of heavy moisture is a really good idea. And this is me just trying to show you, look, I can lay my hairs down on my arms with it, but I don't really have a lot of hair on my body, you know, so it's kind of silly. But I also did want to try something fun because while the Soprentices are going through all my DMs, there was a conversation that I'd had with a guy that asked about glitter in beards, you know, in beard balms. And so I thought, yeah, I can kind of answer that question and give you guys some information with a beard balm glitter thing. And so, I mean, obviously the first thing that you're going to want to do for a glitter that you put into a beard balm is make sure that it is approved for cosmetic use around the lips because that's where your beard is. And so that's kind of hard to find. So the biodegradable glitter, make sure it actually hits all those guidelines. And I just put a half a teaspoon into what is one ounce worth of a, a beard balm. So you use kind of a lot of glitter. I do recommend putting the glitter in when the mixture is much, much cooler than what I have now. It's probably sitting at around 140 degrees now. It's way too hot. If you put it in when it's around 100 degrees, it will actually allow the, you know, glitter to go through the entire beard balm and not just settle to the bottom because it is a heavier weight, you know, particle within the entire solution. So just do keep that in mind. But yeah, it's doable. And that's totally a moment, you know. I actually forgot. I wanted Mr. Soap and Clay to wear the glitter in his beard for the Eras Tour. And I forgot to pack it. But I am going to show you him putting some glitter in his beard right now so you can kind of see what it looks like in the finished product but yeah it's a moment it's very strange and he's a good sport that he decided to do this and so there it is all firmed up and as you can see lots of glitter for sure and it still has the exact same consistency with this recipe again it's it's kind of a good recipe because you have the butters which would be considered like a mid firm right and then the oils obviously that's going to be a liquid and then the e-wax it's going to be you know, a firm firm. So it all melds together really nicely to create a product that, again, is easy to scoop, but still solidifies nicely for a balm and does a great job, you know, well, in this case, glittering the beard. And there it is, my beard balm recipe. And yeah, super fun. I love this one a lot. I actually might like this a little bit more than the ones that I currently have in my line. This is something that I would not be selling in the summertime though. Because it's not as firm as the beard balms that I normally sell, I really would be worried about it getting completely just like melted and kind of dangerous in shipping, you know, during the summer months. But this is definitely a great one to ship during the winter. And I really love it. Mr. Soap and Clay loved it. The, the glitter for, for one of them, that was a fun moment. He didn't like me very much after that though it's cool if people want to put glitter in their beard and that's a whole vibe like i get it i respect it but i did that to him and uh he had a hard time getting it out and he had to be on a zoom call for well a team's call for work so i'm sorry about it i'm glad that he loves me and will forgive me so yeah, there's that. I hope you guys had a good time with this recipe. Uh, definitely subscribe, stick around. You're going to want to see the rest of the Project Soapway, you know, submissions, the winners, because they're epic and I love them and you're going to love them and the recipes are incredible. So thank you to the Sudzers for submitting for Project Soapway, for existing just generally in life, you know, and for being my friend. I appreciate you. For the rest of you, hi, you're here too. That's awesome. Hope you enjoyed the recipe. But I will be back tomorrow with a Project Soapway winner and another round of Soapy Fun. Beard Fun. Bye.
Okay, week 28, week 28, week 28. Yes. That is so weird. I used to, just to pick up the camera or the mic, whatever, I would say what day it was or what week it was or whatever, just to make sure that the audio was syncing and whatnot. And so I would say, as I just did, but probably cut it out, week 28, week 28, week 28, yes. And then I stopped doing that for the longest time. And I find that really wild, how I'm doing it again. I don't know what's happening with me. I'm going in cycles. <laughs>